Welcome to the Women's Wellness Podcast, where we interview experts in various fields with the goal of empowering women to make informed decisions about their health, life, and family. I'm your host, Amy Jane Smith, and I would like to thank you for tuning in today to get comfy while I introduce our next guest. Hello and welcome back to the Women's Wellness Podcast. I'm Amy and I'm your host. And this is part two of my IVF story podcast because I started off last week talking about my IVF journey, um, my about my embarkment onto round two of IVF and how to lower my toxin levels and in the end I kind of gave you a backstory of everything else and never actually got to that part so if you want to watch that I'll pop the link up um, in the show notes and I'll pop it up here as well for you for those of you watching on YouTube so last week I covered everything up until my debrief appointment which was on Thursday um I'm recording this straight after, so it's still two days ago I had my appointment. And so what they told me was that my AMH levels were low. AMH is the anti-malarian hormone, and that is the hormone that I think, correct me if I'm wrong, I think is produced by the eggs or the ovaries to show what your stores are like. Okay, so the higher the AMH, the higher your egg stores, the lower the AMH, the lower your egg stores. And mine, I was tested two years ago when we first started this journey, and it was on the low side of normal for my age, and it's probably just dropped off since then, which means that the um, egg quality isn't as good as it would have been when I was. 16 but nobody wants a baby when they're 16 do they um right well i didn't um so yes so she told me that i also asked her if i could have my endometrioma removed and what she said is that when they remove endometriosis if you have it on the ovary they cut into the ovary to remove it and they take some of the eggs with them So I was 21 when I had endometriosis removal surgery, excision surgery, and I had it around my ovaries. So the odds are that they removed a fair few eggs at that time, which I didn't know about, and it's a bit annoying. But what are you going to do? I was in pain. It was what's done. But yeah, just consider that if you try to track check your fertility see if maybe you can remove eggs beforehand i don't know i don't know you never know what what the world's gonna throw you away i didn't think i'd be here at 37 trying to have a baby but there you go anyway so um what she has recommended so the last cycle i was on 300 milligrams of gonal f i was on orgalutran i was on um, some pregnal the gonal F was to stimulate, the orgalutran is to keep everything from releasing itself, and the pregnal was to do extra stimulation. So that brings me up to now. They are going to do 275 of gonal F, followed by 25 of men- menopure, something like that, which... From the sounds of it, it sounds like I'll be a bit menopausal, acting, mimicking, but hmm, we'll see. That is to give it both barrels again, so 300 is the maximum I'm allowed, but they're going to go with two different types to see if that triggers more than five eggs, which is what I got last time. Um, I'm due to start in November. And what I've got to do is phone them in October, which is next month, and we will, and then this time, this is what I didn't do before. So this time, just to make sure they've got the day I ovulate correct, and they give me the pills at the right time, the Proganova pills, they are going to 
get me to have a blood test every day or every couple of days. So in this appointment, I was very overwhelmed again. So Nick has, my husband has told me most of it, from what I can remember. So yeah, every day or so, I'm going to go for a blood test. They're going to check, see when I ovulated. And then I will have the Proganova pills to prevent any follicles from starting to grow early before, before my next cycle starts. So that will be October. And then November is when I will go and collect my injections and we'll start doing that again. Hopefully I don't need another antibiotic, but if I do, I know now to have a full meal before I eat anything. I don't think I ate much or enough to line my stomach the first time and it went straight through me and I ended up with diarrhea and shaking and I had to go to bed and say goodnight to all of my guests who were at my leaving party slash birthday party so that wasn't a bit, that wasn't very fun. So yeah, eat before you have your antibiotic. Um, next, what did they do? Oh, she also, so when I left, she sent me over to the lab test to have a blood test. It's all stabby, 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 this, this thing. If you're scared of needles, you'll soon get over it. Um, they uh, sent me over there to have a thyroid test. So I have mild hypothyroidism. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I never had any symptoms outwardly that I know of, but they're doing that and they're checking everything and that's fine. I also have anti-thyroid antibodies. So I'm susceptible to developing autoimmune issues later on in life. Yay. Um, they also checked the doing a DNA test, which means it's going to take four to six weeks to do. And I think that is going to be checking, well, checking my DNA, but it's going to check for any chromosomal abnormalities, any fragmentation, or I don't know what, but they're going to see if maybe that's related to the eggs not doing their job properly. Nick is fine. He's got champion swim team. They're great. They did their job. They fertilized the egg and then it just kind of went, eh. So, eh. Um, did I mention it in this one or the last one? They're going to do time-lapse imaging. If I just told you, I'm telling you again. They... I didn't write anything down this time. What that is, is they're going to have whatever, however many eggs they collect, and they're going to put them all together with a camera that takes photos every 10 minutes to check how well they separate and split and do what they need to do. And they check for abnormalities. And then they're able to see using artificial intelligence, which one's the best. And they'll pop that one in. Quick rundown, because I did mention it in the last one, if I didn't mention it in this one already. Apologies if I did. So yeah, that's quite interesting. I get to see, I hope they give me the results. I'm sure I can ask for them because it's my information anyway. We'll see, that'll be, that'll be fun. Um, and she also told me, so to cut down on toxins and take supplements. I'll show you the supplements first. I've only got one at the moment. She wanted me to take them ASAP, but turns out the second one was quite difficult to find, so I've had to order it to get it delivered. But the first one is CoQ10. Now, coenzyme Q10, it's always talking about heart health. Oh, vanilla flavoured capsule. Capsules are like suppositories. I hate taking pills. I'm, I'm not sure I was a cat in a past life. But look at this. It's bigger than my mouth. It's like the size of my eye like the size of my eye. Look at that. Ridiculous. So luckily I've got to take one of those a day. Lucky me. Along with my folic acid and my level of thyroxine for my low thyroid. Um, 
I've also got to take what's called myo-inositol, and that is to help. So both of these are to help with cells and boosting good cells and healthy cells. So the egg is a cell. It's the largest cell in the body. And if I take these a couple of months out, because as I said before, we start in November, then the eggs will get the most best nourishment possible. Sorry, I'll stop rattling that around right next to the microphone. Um, I'll show you the myo inositol later. If you've ever read the book, it starts with the egg. These are mentioned in there, and I do remember, it's the only way I remember the actual name. Yeah, they mention it in there. Um, lowering toxins. She mentioned your BPAs, your phthal phthalates, I can't say it, your parabens, all of those, which is in makeup, and I've made myself up today. I don't wear makeup very often, but I do to make myself prettier for you, so I don't look like death warmed up. Um, but also stimulants and the like. So I'm going to go through those now. It's taking me 10 minutes, but I'm going to get through those now. What they, so BPA, I've written this down, BPA, phthalates and parabens, they can be found in your makeup, in um, fragrances, they can be fake fragrances. So if you've got a moisturizer and it's got, it's fragranced, and even if it just says the word fragrance on it, it's a fake fragrance. And all of these on BPAs are found in your plastic water bottles and food packaging. So if you're cooking or reheating in a plastic packet, don't. I recommend taking it out, putting it in a ceramic bowl or a glass bowl, putting it in the microwave that way. Um, there are hormone disruptors and a lot of them it says like it says on the internet and places that they are hormone disruptors and they are they're phytoestrogens and what that means is they 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 mimic estrogen in the body and if you've got these fake estrogens these est estrogen like molecules that are going around in the body the estrogen receptors i think of Please comment below if I'm just making this up. But um, the estrogen receptors will bind to the fake estrogen and it will try and do the job with that, but it can't. And they're, they're stuck, they're together. What that means is that the real estrogen is floating around and there's nothing to bind to it because it's all used up binding to the fake crap. So then I think the estrogen bite builds up and it can't be it can't be used because the things that are doing the job of working with the other stuff and everything builds up and everything gets imbalanced and the body just can't function properly because things are piling up and it's getting all stressed and it's all Ugh. um yeah like if your in tray was piling up and piling up and piling up and you were busy working with tat that you weren't meant to be really doing, like, I don't know, organizing your sister's baby shower when all your important work's piling up. Um, yeah, things like that. So what I have done to help, I'm also reducing my alcohol. I've never smoked and my coffee intake is negligible. I do have a bit of a tea habit. What I'm doing, and I can't find it, it's disappeared, I'm going to have to buy more, is I've started buying, it's a Healthery's brand, I think. It's called Energizing Blend. It's the super fruits. And that helps to pick me up a little bit. So let's start. Let's start. I am also a big, big fan of essential oils. And this is what I've been using to help me get through the toxin, toxic load that I use on a day-to-day -day basis. So first things first, if I need a pick-me-up, 
in the morning because I can't have a coffee or I shouldn't be having a tea because if I have a tea I really want to put a sugar in it and that's not good. Sugar is inflammatory as well and dairy is inflammatory and I'm trying to reduce inflammation with my endometriosis. So that's another thing. This one, it's peppermint. Peppermint oil is fantastic for giving me a pick-me-up. And all you do is go... Boop, oop, two. Rub your hands together. Place it over your nose and... And it just kind of... It's so strong. Like You know what peppermint smells like, right? If you pick up the peppermint gum instead of the spearmint Whoa, you know that's really picked you up and then i just rub it on the back of my neck and it kind of just oh. <sighs> that is like instant whoo, hello pick me up don't rub your eyes afterwards though because as i said peppermint it's strong it will sting so that's what i use there and then i've got a little introductory kit that's what i've using at the moment lavender i won't use that now but i do use this i've been using this quite a lot at night either spraying a little bit on my pillow or i'm rubbing it on my feet that and magnolia for sleep when i'm starting to get busy brain that is helping me there big time next moving on to sugar cravings because i'm a big chocoholic moving in with my in-laws has helped because the mother-in-law is a chocoholic too and I'm trying to cut down to help us both which yeah harder than I thought but I'm getting there which moves me on to smart and sassy and my little water bottle so I found this in the supermarket when I went shopping finally found a little water bottle that I like it's 500 mils perfect size to fit in my handbag and what I've been doing is I popped one drop in my water I'll build up eventually but if it's got a bit of peppermint as well, and if I'm, um, I normally crave sugar when I'm feeling a bit low and a bit tired, so the peppermint is a pick-me-up. But it's also got grapefruit, lemon, ginger and cinnamon, which curb sugar cravings and also curb metabolism. Boost your metabolism, curb your, you don't want to curb your metabolism. So yeah, just a nice little... We'll take a sip actually now. It's quite refreshing actually. I prefer it in hot water, but one drop in a 500ml bottle is fine. So that is what I use for those to kind of help curb my cravings that way. Um, I'm still having a sneaky glass of wine, but I managed to cut down before. What I've been doing, Heineken. 0% alcohol. If you want anything that tastes like booze but has zero alcohol, recommend that. It's not probably low toxin, but if you want to cut down your alcohol levels, yeah, give that a go. Um, next, so all of your phthalates and your parabens and all of that are in your cleaning products, or in your face products, in your toiletries. So this is where my lovely friend doTERRA comes in handy again. This, now I've run out of the mouthwash, but this is amazing. Toothpaste, they've just brought out a whitening one, which I'm going to get next when this runs out. But this with the mouthwash is amazing. This by itself was a bit meh, but this with the mouthwash, holy moly, next level. Speaking of on guard, I've got this for my hand sanitizer which is, it smells like Christmas. It's just, I can't smell it now because this one's a sealed one that I bought for somebody else. But you spritz that on your hands. It's got, um, what's it? Sanitizing mist. It's got, it's got um, alcohol in it to make it antibacterial. And it's got apple, orange, clove, cinnamon rosemary so yeah it's like christmas it's like mold wine on your hands and then next is my face regime so i haven't got them all they're in the bathroom i wasn't going to bring them all but this 
is making my skin amazing. If you can tell, I've got like one spot there, a little one, and one spot there, and that is only because I found a little bit and I picked it, but my skin hasn't been so clear in ages. And yeah, no fragrances apart from essential oils, which smells amazing. And no phthal phthalates, no parabens, no BPAs. So very, very good. And then the last one is my shampoo and conditioner. Again, awesome smelling and it hasn't got any nasty nastiness in it. The only fragrances that are in it are natural occurring fragrances that have been taken from the source. So like lavender, it's made from lavender and that's it, pure. So that has been helping me kind of remove the toxins. It takes a while to get through. And I know, I know, I know. I could hear people saying, Amy, our liver and kidneys do the detoxing. We don't need to go on a cleanse. We don't need to do all this. Our liver does it for us. Yes, that is true. However, our, like I said with the estrogen, if we have fake estrogen that's being taken by the estrogen receptors and it's taken through the liver and it's pushed out through the body and excreted, that's great. But the real estrogen is going into the liver and there's no receptors left to bind to it to take it and flush it out. So it goes back around the bloodstream until it comes back. And then it goes back around again and it changes form. So it's not the real estrogen anymore. It just kind of goes around the body because the body is getting rid of the fake stuff first. And by removing the fake stuff, that's how we get dominance in certain hormones. We get estrogen dominance. We get um, issues with our bodies. And that's if we have plastic drink bottles, if we can remove our toxins as much as possible, obviously it's, it's impossible to remove everything in the world we live in. But if we remove what we can, we're giving our body and we're giving our detox system a fighting chance. So we're giving our liver and our kidneys a fighting chance at doing their job properly. And that's what I'm about. So by having fruits and veggies, organic if you can, but if you can't, don't worry. You can, I've got a recipe for a wash where you can wash them, get rid of any pesticides, which also mimic hormones. Um, drinking lots of water to help your kidneys and your liver flush things through and not overloading yourself. That is what I've been learning. And it was quite nice to have my... Um, fertility doctor tell me to cut down on the toxins and remove these things from my life. Um, so yeah, the next step it, for me is just to carry on doing what I'm doing. I have also got um, a shower gel coming soon, which I tried at a friend's house and was amazing. Oh, wonderful. Um, and this time around as well, I'm going to be practicing more mindfulness and more meditation and breathing practices into my day and try and be a bit slower. But that's, that's all I can do. And all, all we can do is see what happens. So I will give updates in my Facebook group and I will carry on sharing stories here as well. Please comment below if you would like to share your story or if you'd like to know more about detoxing your body and removing toxins from your life. And yeah, I would love to hear your stories too. If you'd like to be interviewed, please let me know. And thank you for.
for listening. As I said, it's it's tricky to share these things because they're so personal. You don't want to feel like you're failing at life, but it's yeah, we're not failing. We're learning. How about that? So thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, and I will catch you in the next episode. Bye. Thank you for listening to the Women's Wellness Podcast. For links and show notes, please visit www.connecthealth.fitness forward slash podcast. I would love for you to subscribe to the channel so you get notified when we release our next episode and please share with anyone who you think might benefit. Thank you again. I look forward to seeing you soon.